Flesh and Bone went almost immediately to video in America, but it deserves a better fate than that. Still, the way things stand, Oliver Stone's Natural Born Killers will probably never go to video at all. It might not even go on general release, though it should have done next week. But it won't, because the British Board of Film Classification has failed to give it a certificate on the grounds of excessive violence. Well, OK, it is violent. It's based on a story by Quentin Tarantino and is about a couple of psychopaths, Woody Harrelson and Juliette Lewis, who go on a killing spree across America. So far, it's been blamed for inspiring at least ten copycat killings, though there's no evidence that it did any such thing. In any event, it's not a film that sets out to glorify violence. It is, in fact, a bleak satire on the American media, especially TV, which exploits real-life violence as entertainment and on the American legal and prison system, which can be just as violent as the people it punishes. It's lurid and shocking, certainly, but it also has serious things to say. I discussed it with Oliver Stone when he was in London a week or so before the British censors refused it a certificate. Mickey, do you take Mallory to be your lawful wedded wife to have and hold and treat right until you die? I do. Oh, baby. Mallory, do you take Mickey to be your... I'm gonna murder anybody on a wedding day. What has happened for America to develop this morbid, obsessive interest in, in violence? In violence and death and tragedy as soap opera. The local news in America is, is insane right now. It's like you clock the whole day on the local TV. You can go from, you know, 11 o'clock, grandmother gets killed, watch for that. At 12 o'clock, we have a, a three-year-old is, is killed. At 4 o'clock, we have a mother of six. So they make you... They try to hook you into the concept of watching somebody else's uh, misery or tragedy. In the film, you you say you are trying to satirize that. It's very difficult to satirize, isn't it? When you know it, it's got beyond satire. In a sense, I mean, the film is done in it with a I I, I believe with a sense of black humor. Uh, it is not you know the violence is not uh, you know you've seen uh, Born on the Fourth of July you've seen uh, my the, my violence in Platoon. That is what I call realistic uh, violence. This is cartoon violence for me. The problem is that you're in danger of glorifying what you're satirizing because we, uh, uh, despite ourselves, we want Mickey and Mallory to get away. That's true. It is a violent movie. I mean, I don't think it's gory. I, I tried to stay away from, you know, disgusting people. I think it's done with a sense of humor, but still, it is violent. And the fact is that how can I show the time? How can I decry the time? How can I denounce it without showing what's the, the climate. And also one gets the impression that in America serial killers have become as much a part of the culture as Elvis. It's all relative. In a century where we've had Hitler, Stalin, Armenia, uh, Vietnam, and huge environmental damage uh, and, and wildlife extinction, I mean we've had death and murder from the beginning of the century in massive numbers. You know, the point of the film is, you know, what is 52 bodies? I mean, these people are, it's unpardonable, but they do, they do go out and they kill 52 people. Yeah. But as they say, it's all relative to a, a world that has gone insane, hysteric. Uh, they raise the question of who is really the natural born killer here. The way you made the film is, is interesting because you get the actuality of what Mickey and Mallory are doing, and then you get what's going on in their heads, and you get violent comic sequences. This in itself is violence towards the audience, isn't it? It's an assault on their senses. If you look at television, the accumulative effect of television, in my opinion, is sort of a psychic energy damage that comes out, an assault, as you, as you said. And Mickey and Mallory are sort of channel surfers, in a sense. They, they move through a television mentality. So we, we wanted to make the film like a commercial. Wherever we go, and whatever happens, Mickey, when I look up at the stars, I know you're looking up at the same ones. Same ones, baby. <laughs> you make every day feel like kindergarten. <laughs> All right! What part do, do, do you think the media plays, particularly television plays in all this? Because um, Robert Downey Jr. has this show, um, American Maniac. Um, I mean, are you blaming the media? It's media, it's police, it's uh, prison system. It's twofold, a desire for punishment, a desire for, instead of prevention. Prevent crime, don't punish it. On a second level, the media 
has just tuned in to this thing because it makes money. That's the only reason. The episode we did on Mickey and Mallory, it was one of our most popular ones. You ever do one on John Wayne Gacy? Uh, yeah. yeah. Who got the higher rating? Oh, he was. Blew him away. What about that crazy Ted Bundy? Oh, that crazy guy. Uh, no, you, you got the larger the Austin share. You're big. You're big. Okay. Yeah. Well, what do I want to get? The, about Manson. The... Manson picture. Well, yeah, it's pretty hard to beat the king. Did, did you have any, any problems getting a certificate with the film? Did you have to tone it down in any way? I certainly uh, had two months of uh, tedious bargaining with the American uh, censor board. It was, uh, uh, I ultimately ended up making 150 trims and cuts uh, on the film. Wow. After five, approximately five visits. Did that surprise you? Because, as you said, the, the aftermath of violence is, is very visible, but the violence itself is not so visible. Were you expecting that kind of trouble? Not frankly, but the Warner Brothers was. Uh, they deal with them all the time. You know, uh, what is, you know, I mean, I think that this film makes you stop, makes you think. It, may, it, may, it gives pause. Mm -hmm. The result of it is, you know, you, you hate it, you love it, you hate yourself for loving it. There's all kinds of reactions. but. You know, there's no d doubt that you walk out of that film, you have to re-examine your relationship to, the, to television, your, examine, your, your relationship to violence, your relationship to what you feel about these characters. It, it, it's a thinking process. When you come out of the usual action film, as well made as true, sp true speed, I was going to say, as true lies and yeah. speed are, they are well made. But you walk out of those two movies and there's no consequences to the action and the violence in the movie. Oh, well, they're total fantasy, aren't they? Aren't yeah. They don't really apply to the world around. around us. It is a hard film. It's a, in some ways, it's a cold film. It's a dark film. But I'm hoping that the British, who are traditionally tough uh, on violence, uh, will understand that this film is, you know, a, a social document is, uh, of yeah. its time. Well, I'm sure you know this, that recently there, a young couple, 16-year-old and 22-year-old, went on a thieving, killing, mur kidnapping spree. And the FBI said they were probably influenced by natural-born killers. Do you think that's at all possible? No, that's not possible. I know the story. Those two kids were committing the murders uh, before the film had been released, unless they got into a sneak preview in Hollywood, which I very <laughs> much doubt. It was impossible for them to have seen it. And for that FBI agent, actually his quote was something to the effect that uh, it, the MO, the modus operandi, was similar to the movie, but he never suggested that they had seen it or knew about it. Anybody who commits an act of violence is deeply disturbed in yeah. the first place. There's something wrong and that's going on. He may see a movie. Somebody saw Schindler's List and blew somebody's head off in the theater in LA or in California. That did not mean that Schindler's List created it. It was a spark. But if it hadn't been Schindler's List, I bet you that same person would have been sparked yeah. by his mother saying something or an incident in a store. Anything can kick off a violent person. Yeah. A movie is, you know, it's the same thing. I mean, you don't ban football if a kid dies, you know. I mean, there are these, these incidents that unfortunately happen, but, you know, the tabloids love to make stories and mythologies out of that thing. Interestingly, James Furman, the British censor, was originally prepared to give Natural Born Killers an 18 certificate. I see nothing wrong with that. Why is it that in this country we're trusted at the age of 18 to vote, choose a marriage partner, take out a mortgage, and fight and die for our country, but somehow we can't be trusted to choose the films we want to see? I don't know what, if any, pressure James Furman was under to change his mind, but it may not be unconnected with the new Criminal Justice Act, which for the first time allows the film censor's decisions to be challenged in the courts. But by whom? Anyone who's seen it and disapproves and therefore thinks nobody else should be allowed to see it? It's alarming enough that film censorship should become a political matter influenced by MPs whose interest is less in the cinema than implicating their more vociferous constituents. But it would be intolerable if legal power were to be handed over to any individual who believes that he or she knows better than we do what is good for us. Anyway, this is an argument that's destined to run and run, and in the meantime, Natural Born Killers can be seen at a special showing in the London Film Festival, where it doesn't need a certificate on November the 12th.